It's Q&A tea time, my love, so get ready. Go and grab a cup of tea and then go and sit down because I'm gonna be answering your questions. Hello, my beautiful MK Love fam, and welcome back to another episode. Today, it is Q&A tea time. I'm so excited to answer your questions, and I just want to say, before I begin, a massive shout out to every single person who has ever sent me a question. I get so many of them, and I do my best to feature as many as I possibly can on this channel, but I just wanted to let you know that I truly appreciate the time that you have taken to write to me. So, without further ado, I hope you have got all cozy on the couch, got your cup of tea in hand, and we're ready to get cracking. All right, let's have a look. Okay, so today's first question comes from Chloe, and she asks, what books can you recommend for self-development, healing, meditation, and the law of attraction? Oh my God, Chloe, that's a lot. So the book that, oh, there's so many books that changed my life, but the one that comes to mind first is You Can Heal Your Life by Louise L. Hay. I love this book for so many reasons, but the main one is because of the very back of the book where she talks about the metaphysics guide. Um, in that, she lists an A to Z guide. So if you, um, like me, bite your fingernails, and I've covered them up with fake nails, which you probably wouldn't have noticed if I didn't point them out. Um, I oh, This week was really hard, actually, and I was just like, watching a video and all of a sudden I'm like oh my god I chewed my fingernails off and so I had to go to the shops and buy fake ones and make them all nice again because when I read cards my fingers are on the screen all the time I am learning to release this blockage so I can set myself free vibrate on the frequency of love anyways back to Chloe's question so books that changed my life yeah you Can Heal Your Life by Louise L. Hay. I really love that book. It's amazing. I actually love the audiobook because I love the way Louise talks and she's got such pure, pure positive energy that just comes through and she's just beautiful. Another one that changed my life is, oh my gosh, there's so many of them. The Five Love Languages. That's a massive one. I actually made a, a video about that one and it's even got a, um, a section for you to do like a little quiz to see what is your love language. It talks about the difference of like the way that you give love and receive love. It may be a little bit different. And if you're in a relationship where you're not feeling loved, maybe the person that you're with isn't showing you the way that you want to receive love. Maybe they're like, oh my God, I did this, 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 and this. But if your love language is somebody saying, spending time with you and all they're doing is buying you gifts, there's, you're not gonna feel the love even though that person may feel like they're giving you love. Anyway, so Peter and I did that quite early on in our relationship, um, and we were actually quite fortunate enough, enough that our first, that top two love languages were exactly the same. So the way I give love and receive love is the same as he as, as he does. So it was a lot easy, but it helped me identify in past relationships the way that people showed me love was not the way that I wanted to receive love. Um, so that was really interesting. Highly recommend you check that out. Another book, um, anything to do with the law of attraction would come from Esther and Jerry Hicks. Um, they wrote the book, Ask and It's Given, The Astonishing Power of Emotions. Everything that I talk about to do with the law of attraction came exactly from those books, listening to their YouTube channel, um, like on repeat, like I mean streaming for hours and hours and hours, like eight or nine hours. If When I was learning the law of attraction, I was, um, in the process of making a recipe ebook um, to help nourish and heal your, your body from the inside out. And as I was making recipes, I was literally listening to that um, on repeat. Uh, it was just amazing. It's just so simple the way that they talk about it. And that has totally been infused into everything that I teach you guys. And especially in my um, private readings, my general readings, the thoughts that you think becomes the words that you speak becomes what you manifest into your reality. So if there's resistance in your vib vibration, you need to cleanse, clean that up so you can manifest what you want. And I don't know, I found that really amazing. Another book that kind of doesn't really fit into these categories, but was truly influential on my journey was um, the book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. 
She is an amazing woman. She's like a Japanese organizing kind of consultant. Well, she's got, she's a very smart businesswoman. She's created an empire from it. And that book helped me become a minimalist, actually. Um, it's The book isn't designed to help you become a minimalist, but that was a byproduct of the book for me. Um, it helped me work out what sparks joy in my life. You can use that analogy for the people that you're dating, the food that you're eating, the clothes that you're wearing, the jewelry that you're wearing, your hair that you've got styled, your oracle cards that you own, your beautiful teacup. Like, I went through a process of following everything that she says in the book and she's got an app which is amazing too. And it's just, oh, it's so good. I made a series on it too. I've got three videos in that series. If you haven't already checked out that, um, I basically summarized the whole book into three videos. So if you want to save your time, save some time, then I highly recommend that you watch it. So good. But yeah, I don't know. I just love that book. It's just such an interesting technique to look at everything you own. And let me give you an example. For clothes, for all your clothes, you put every single piece of clothing that you own, you pop it on the floor and you pick each one up at a time as you go through different sections of clothing and you hold it up and you use your intuition to help guide you. And if you have a direct like, oh, yes, I love this piece, then you pop it in your cupboard or you fold it a certain way. If you pick it up and you don't feel anything and you're like, oh, I haven't worn this in six months or I'm not really sure, your intuition isn't giving you anything strong, so you get rid of it. And it's really beautiful because she she talks about this um, this part of like a releasing ceremony. And, and I always say like, thank you, thank you, thank you, um, T-shirt for bringing me so much joy at this time of my life. I thank you and I release you and I set you free. So I've done that for every aspect of my house, house um, of my life, really, my computer, um, Oh, I can't recommend it enough. The life-changing magic of tidying up. Um, what else was really good, influential? In regards to self-development, in regards to food, I don't know if they were kind of linked together in the category that you're probably thinking, but to me, anything that raises my vibration is a form of self-development. And that is the book called How Not to Die by Dr. Michael Greger from nutritionfacts.org. He is a powerhouse. He has literally dedicated his life to creating a nonprofit organization called nutritionfacts.org. He's got a YouTube channel. He releases a video every single day on the latest on evidence-based nutrition. His book changed my life. Um, especially like the first part of the book is all about the 10 leading causes of death in the world. If you know anyone that's got illness and disease, probably read this book. Don't give it to them because they have to be willing to want to change and most people that I know that either have cancer or have someone that has passed aren't really at the stage where they're like, give me the book. They're like, just shut off. So be very mindful about the way that you handle that information, if that makes sense. Um, part two of the book, I highly recommend, um, where he talks about the daily dozen. He goes through um, each of the 12 items talking about like, Oh, he talks about cruciferous vegetables, legumes, water, exercise, all of these different things that you need to do and ingest and drink every single day that's literally going to help you vibrate on the frequency of love. And it's just amazing. Like I didn't even, when I learned about the properties of nuts, oh my God, I actually made a whole video about that. Actually, I have a whole series called How Not to Die. Um, on my channel. So if you're interested, you can go through my playlist and you will find it. That book was amazing. Uh, absolutely amazing. And it kind of was a book that I used to help me when people would say, oh, why are you vegan and this, this and that. And I was like, well, if you look at the science of blah, 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 like it was kind of like a good reference point. Uh, anyway, I've spoken like 10 minutes on that one question. So Chloe, I hope you love that one. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, this one, I don't even know how to pronounce your name. I don't know. Oh God, I'm not even gonna. Shika? Oh, I don't even know how to say this. I'm so sorry. Um, and your question is about work-life balance. Who? this is something that I'm still learning to master. <laughs> okay, so you said, hi Mel, I have a suggestion. Could you do a video on work-life balance? 
I'm a thorough follower of the law of attraction and it's worked for me in almost every walk of life. Yes, however, sometimes I always fail to apply that on work, uh, fail to apply that with work-life balance. Professionally, I'm an auditor and so my work takes a large portion of my day, blah, 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 blah. Okay, work-life balance, uh, I can't tell you the answer to that one. I feel like everyone knows what they need to do from like your own intuition. But in terms of like managing your day, that's something I haven't mastered. Um, I know what I need to do some days, but like I know I have to start the day to, if I'm filming, um, I don't normally go outside in the morning. I like to raise my vibration inside by like dancing around and being silly. But in saying that today, I'm, this is like my third video that I have filmed. I actually went for a quick swim in the water. Um, but Peter did kind of drag me there. But sometimes I work too much and sometimes I'm like, I don't have any, I have no, I have no desire to do anything. I have emails on my computer from someone who wrote to me the most beautiful review for a reading. It's been sitting there for two or three days and I haven't written her back and I know that I have to write it back but I just, I just don't feel like I can, if that makes sense. In regards to work-life balance, to have a more beautiful life, I know that when I'm, okay, let me break it down like this. Hold on, let me just have a drink. <laughs> I know that I feel my best when I raise my vibration and then I begin work. And I find that sometimes I get caught up, sometimes when creating, create, create, blah, 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 can't even talk. Sometimes when creating, oh my God, creativity takes over me. It's like a whirlwind and like as a very creative person, when that inspiration hits, you take it with both hands and you just run with it. Sometimes that means that I work like till I go to bed. Um, sometimes that means that I get up at five o'clock and I'm editing before I do my self-love practices and start my day. It's just, I just feel my best when I'm doing my self-love practices in the morning. I can't really give you an answer with, for that one because I haven't really worked that one out. I don't know if anyone has really worked that out. I know that we all know that when you when you do your self-love practices in the morning, it helps. It's like you work smarter throughout your day instead of harder. So if I haven't raised my vibration, I feel like one task that would take me 30 minutes is taking me like two hours and I'm wasting time. And I was like, did you go outside today, Mel? No. Did you sing? No. Did you journal? No. It was like, well, you only have yourself to blame. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I am learning to find my balance and it's exciting that I know what to do, but I just don't always do it. So I can't really say that this is what you need to do. I just know that when I feel better, this is the format that I follow. So I hope that kind of helps you out with that one. All right, what time are we at? 13, 14 minutes. Okay, maybe just one more. Okay, this one is from Kathleen and she says, I'm holding on to a relationship that, oh, am I holding on to a relationship that no longer serves me? Uh, I need more background. For the past six months, I have been losing touch with my old friend or roommate that I truly thought was my soul sister. After quickly getting into a new relationship and moving in with him, she eventually stopped reaching out to me. I have given multiple attempts in reaching out to her. However, she has not put in the effort into meeting up with me. It has been weighing on the back of my mind and has given me a lot of grief, especially when I think about how much love and light she has given me over the past four years. Ooh, okay. I can feel the resistance here. However, it almost seems as though she does not care about our relationship as much as I do, and I'm wondering if I should let her go. Okay. Kathleen, with that one, I would say you're looking at it very one-sided. Neighbors, go away. Hold on. I hope you can't hear that. Kathleen, I feel like for this one, you're looking at it very one-sided. Your friend is in a new relationship. New relationships kind of sweep you off your feet and you get caught up in all of like the romance and it's just a really beautiful time. I feel like because people evolve and change, we need to, 
We need to let go of the resistance because you have so much resistance in your vibration. You're like holding on to her and you want things to always stay the same and that she always spends heaps of time with you. And the point here where you said, it has been weighing on the back of my mind. Have you spoken to her about this? Tell her how you feel. She may not be aware. She may be so caught up in whatever is going on, this new delicious man that she's dating, that she may not have even thought of that. Um, but I feel like in those situations, I've actually been in a situation like that where someone was like super close to me, but then was going through something and I was like, I thought you loved me, but now you don't and now I don't speak to you. It's kind of like you just need to say, I love you and I release you and I surrender and I set myself free. You're literally causing resistance in your vibration, which is probably delaying manifestations in every other area of your life. If you just set her free and just say, it's kind of like, you just keep doing what you're doing and you make yourself feel amazing. You do your self-love practices. You're gonna to get to a point where if she is meant to be in your life, it will work out. But if you're putting resistance in your vibration saying like, woe is me, why isn't she spending time with me? Me, 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 me. Instead of thinking about like, sending love to like all those beautiful memories that you had. Isn't it amazing that you had such a wonderful time together? Isn't it amazing that she was your rock and she helped you out when the shit hit the fan? Isn't it amazing that you called her your soul sister? There was obviously something really beautiful about this relationship. And I just feel like we get so attached either to things, to people, to places, to homes, to cars that we we just like we just wanted to always be the same, but life isn't like that. The world is constantly changing and evolving. And Kathleen, I highly recommend that you talk to her and tell her how you're feeling. If you're feeling so much resistance and you can't even think of saying the words, then write a letter to her and burn it and set yourself free. I'm just gonna pull you a card. Let me just pull you a card for the numerology deck, okay? I know you've asked me about this one before, so. Oh, <laughs> you got domestic harmony. So the domestic harmony can come in two ways. Number one, protect your own vibration. And I would, I feel like you, I'm just feeling tension in my throat chakra. I feel like you need to be the person to say something to her. Um, and just say, oh, it really would be lovely if we could like go on a date day or like it really would be lovely if you want to catch up for tea or it really would be lovely you know can we make some time for ourselves like I really miss you just say something like that to her maybe she doesn't know and I feel like as soon as you like take that little step forward I feel like all the resistance behind you would just start to flow and if she doesn't respond and say oh I'm really busy um I don't think if like I don't think she would be like I never want to see you again I don't feel like she's got that kind of vibration I just feel like you just need to take a step back and just say, I'm so happy that my friend has found love. Isn't it beautiful that she's truly happy? Isn't it amazing that she, um, I don't know, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, send love to her, don't send resistance. Maybe she's picking up on that resistance and she's distancing herself from you because of that. I don't think she is, but I would just send a love. I would speak to her so you can find this domestic harmony between you two. Okay, my loves, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. Three questions today, three very different questions. One about friendship, one about books. Um, and what was the other one? About law of attraction, seeing signs. Yeah, so much delicious goodness. If you have a question that you would absolutely love for me to answer on Q&A tea time, click the link in my description or jump to melaniekatelove.com forward slash questions and submit your question on, your, on my website. I get a lot of you sending me private DMs, constantly asking, and I just keep referring you to questions because I can't keep a track of my DMs on Instagram. I get too many. So if I have them all in one place, when I go to film, I just open my computer and boop, 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 it's all there. So yeah, I would love to hear from you. And as always, have an amazing day wherever you are in the world. If you're new to the fam, subscribe, turn on the bell so you receive a notification every single time I upload a video. Anyways, my love, I feel like we just need to breathe in. Breathe out. Everything is working out for me. 
everything is working out for me. Kathleen, I hope I wasn't too hard on you. I feel like I was a little bit hard on you. Um, but I can't remember if you're vibe. I've never read for you before and I can't remember if I need to be hard on you. There's some people that I need to be and some not. I can't remember, but I just feel like I'm just sending you love and everything that I've said to every single one of you that has asked a question has literally come from a place of love. And I hope it helps you. I hope it helps you release those blockages so you can vibrate on the frequency of love, the most beautiful place to be. Anyways, my love, peace out and I'll see you next episode.